Is this decision justif justified for that reason? Well, first of all, uh, thanks for having me on. This is a political decision. <clears throat> the administration on a second track has to make a determination of whether Israel is using weapons that we have given them, many billions of dollars of weapons, uh, just in this conflict, in a legal way. But this is political pressure because the administration uh, felt that Israel was trying to rush into a major offensive in uh, Rafa, right on the Egyptian border, where the remnants of Hamas and some 1.4 million uh, Gazan citizens are all located, uh, without listening to the administration, which wants a very different kind of campaign, if any at all. So this was political pressure. <clears throat> uh, the point was made, both American officials by Defense Secretary Austin and Israeli officials are trying to play this down. I think this is, at the moment, a one-off because we're now focused on ceasefire negotiations in Cairo. And the Israeli incursion into uh, Rafah so far uh, has not been major. It didn't lead to a lot of civilian casualties. And it actually makes sense militarily by getting control of the uh, Rafah crossing and getting control of the border. And in fact, the American government has said basically that, at least today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, indeed, we will, Ambassador. As you say, this is a political decision for the Biden administration because of political pressure he is facing. Does this not so, too, though, apply political pressure uh, to Benjamin Netanyahu or more pressure, at least, a show that the U.S. is willing to exercise the leverage that it has to influence Israeli policy and military decisions? OK, first of all, when the United States makes sense, as recently when Joe Biden picked up the phone and told Bibi Netanyahu he had to do much more on the humanitarian front, or mm -hmm. the threat was exactly what we've done now, uh, limit weapon shipments. Netanyahu complied. The reason is this wasn't central to Netanyahu and the Israeli people's existential fight against Hamas and indirectly against Iran. Uh, they, could can, they could flow more humanitarian aid without unduly affecting their uh, campaign against Hamas. But if the administration thinks that Israel will stop the fight against Hamas when they're essentially at the last stage of it, as uh, the form, well, as the current Israeli defense minister has said, we've completed 80 percent of the job, uh, I think the administration is wrong. What's at uh, the center of this here is administration concern about the political impact in America of civilian casualties. There's no way Israel can fight this war. There's no way we fought wars in Iraq and Syria that I was involved in over the past 20 years in urban areas without considerable civilian casualties. It's a reality. But the administration wants to avoid the political heat. The problem is uh, nobody in the administration has explained to me or the American people or the Israelis how this all ends if Hamas, with some five to 10,000 soldiers, remains under in control of that critical crossing, that critical area of uh, Gaza, with some 1.4 million uh, Gazans. Okay, well, on the subject, Ambassador, of how this all ends, the question about when it ends or, or if it could end in the not-so-distant future is what really is at the center of negotiations around a ceasefire. Hamas would like that ceasefire to be permanent. Israel would not. They want it to be temporary and still be able to exchange some hostages that are currently being held by Hamas, but they ultimately do want to finish the job. When the divide between what the two sides want is that big, how optimistic are you that they are able to, to bridge that gap? Well, that's the problem. And there was uh, certain decisions taken by the intermediaries, the U.S., Egypt, and the state of Qatar, uh, with Hamas over the last few days that led Hamas to believe that they had a deal that would end the fighting for good. And that's what the Israelis have rejected. Uh, they then went into Rafah again in a limited way, and now they're back negotiating. But again, the administration has to clarify this. I'm not even sure they've clarified it to themselves. They talk about rebuilding Gaza. They talk about putting the Palestinian Authority in there, building a new Middle East. But if Hamas, if Israel leaves uh, Gaza and Hamas is left with as I said, five to 10,000 fighters and thus control of it, uh, Israel has lost this war. And Israel, not just Netanyahu, but the people, for very good reason, do not want to lose this war. So there's a real break in communication right now between the Biden administration and Netanyahu. They're trying to fix it, but uh, you can't fix it without coming to some conclusion on this crucial point of the whole war. 
Well, if we could expand upon that, sir, when we think about what the day after looks like, whenever that day ultimately uh, is, your point is well taken that perhaps what the administration would like to see put in place in the Middle East would not actually be realistic if Hamas were uh, still to be existing and operating in Gaza, not totally eliminated. But is it is it a question of whether or not Hamas is still uh, in power in some areas or whether Benjamin Netanyahu is still in power because he has repeatedly pushed against the idea of a two-state solution at the end of this. Right. And there the administration has to be tough because that reflects Netanyahu's current political position. It's not an existential uh, question for the Israeli people on whether they want to continue down the road of a two-step solution, which they have off and on done for the last 30 years, including under Bibi Netanyahu. And he was in discussions with the United States and indirectly with Saudi Arabia on the 6th of August, rather, on the 6th of October, up until then, on how that could happen. <clears throat> so it could happen, and the administration should put pressure on him for that. Uh, that is absolutely legitimate. But again, if Hamas is in control in Gaza, there is no two-state solution. There is no uh, reconstruction of Gaza. There's no future for the people there. And there's very little uh, future for the security of the region, I feel. 